Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tim Dillon Show. The Dave Chappelle controversy keeps going. It rolls on. No matter what else we should be talking about, Dave Chappelle's Netflix special has become the focal point of the media in this country. It is not the uh, rapidly rising prices of utilities, of food. It is not the massive homelessness problem. It is not the inability of uh, the government Washington to function. Uh, it is not any of those things. It is the Dave Chappelle Netflix special where there are uh, em employees of Netflix who are uh, angry at this uh, staging a walkout of the special. So it is a special that I, uh, full disclosure, have not seen all of. I watched a little bit of it. You know, he's a master. Was it the funniest thing in the world? No. Is he is he expressing an opinion held by the vast majority of human beings? about men and women, yes. Um, but the CEO of Netflix, Ted Sarandos, who's Greek, right? I, I believe so, yes. Interesting. So, because uh, there's not a lot of successful Greek people. Mm -hmm. There's really not. That's true. The vast majority of Greeks are, are not doing well. Mm. But, but some of them are, right? Di they own diners, but they're more working class people. Mm. And Ted Sarandos... Mm. Good for him. Is John Stamos? There's a few of them. A couple, yeah. Rita Wilson, Tom Hanks' wife. Mm. It's not a huge group. Mm. So Ted Sarandos, Greek, Giannis Papas, Greek, uh, defended Dave Chappelle and said, "Listen, guys, um, we're going to put out things you may not like them. We don't think it's going to lead uh, to uh, real world violence against trans people." That was basically the gist of his uh, statement. Um, Netflix chief, again, defend Chappelle special. Quote, content doesn't directly translate to real world harm. He said, we have Dave Chappelle on our platform. We also have Hannah Gadsby. And then Hannah Gadsby, who we don't know where she's been. She's somewhere in Australia enforcing a lockdown. I'll tell you that much. Where is she? She's in New Zealand, right? <laughs> Blinking. Anyway, Hannah Gadsby, who's, she's atypical, neurodivergent, whatever. She's not always with us. And when she is with us, she says some very disturbing things and then goes back to where she lives. And that's great. But she doesn't really know what's going on. Or she's kind of fuzzy. It just seems like she's fu like a fuzzy photograph, right? Her hair is never quite mm. done. She's just kind of law. And this is the way it is. Mullen does it great. I'm impressed of her. But every now and then she gets real fired up, you know, when someone insults Greta Thunberg or whatever. She gets real fired up when a white guy does something bad. So she looked at Ted Sarando. She's like, fuck him. And she literally said, uh, she said, hey, Ted Sarandos, just a quick note to let you know that I would prefer if you didn't drag my name into your mess. Now I have to deal with even more of the hate and anger that Dave Chappelle's fans like to unleash on me every time Gabe gets $20 million to process his emotionally stunted partial worldview. Um, fuck you and your amoral algorithm cult. I do... What? With more backbone than you? What is that word? Uh, I can do more s s shit shits. shits. I can do more shits with more backbone than you. <laughs> what? What? But this is what I mean. She's not. <laughs> she's not fully with us. Yeah. She's not fully with us. And God bless her. She's a child of God. She goes. That's just a joke. I definitely didn't cross her lawn because you just told the world there isn't one. Gabs Gadsby captured her post. Yes, I watched the whole thing. Leave me alone. Trans is beautiful. Comedy is dead. I killed it. Those are the hashtags. Mm. It said it says here she's trans as well. I didn't I didn't know that. Well, I didn't either. I, I had no I had no I idea. had no idea. Yeah. Does she talk about this in the net? I don't think so. I don't remember. No, it. right? I don't know. Well, I want to see them both of them hash it out. Mm. You know, who cares about any of this? Comedy's dumb. Stop watching it. Stop watching comedy specials. Get a life. <laughs> Truly. Stop watching comedy specials. Stop watching specials. You have horrible lives. <laughs> you have horrible lives. People are doing so much cool shit on this planet. Stop watching a fucking anybody talk for an hour. Except this show. Because this is different. But the others out there are wasting your time. <laughs> Not me, never would. I respect you. Stop, turn it off, turn it off, and turn this on. 
they're canceling Halloween in Seattle, which makes me think, mm. or not canceling it, but there's a school in Seattle where they're banning the Halloween parade, which makes you glad I own a house in Texas because, you know, it's good to hedge your bets and you don't know what's going to happen with mm. these people. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, Seattle Elementary School cancels its annual pumpkin parade because it, quote, I don't even understand this, marginalizes students of color who don't celebrate Halloween. Who are these students that do not celebrate Halloween? I'm truly confused. Benjamin Franklin Day Elementary School. By the way, how is that still the name of this school? <laughs> Benjamin Franklin Day Elementary School has canceled its upcoming Halloween parade because it, quote, marginalizes students of color. Administrators claim that a number of students, especially African-American boys, do not celebrate Halloween I, and feel excluded. I've never heard, heard of this. Have you heard of this? We have our friends on the couch. I've never heard that African-American boys do not celebrate Halloween. No, never heard that. I, I've never heard of that. Unless they're Muslim, perhaps. I guess, but I, I don't even know. Are they, are they, what about all the gang initiations on Halloween? <laughs> There's tons of gang initiations on Halloween, and mm -hmm. I think African-American boys probably participate in that, mm -hmm. as do white boys and many uh, young men. So I hope we're not canceling that. Mm -hmm. As a school with a foundational beliefs around equity for our students and families, see, this doesn't, I don't even understand what this means here. Let's get rid of the pumpkin parade event. We're getting rid of the pumpkin parade and requesting that students do not come to school in costumes. And I think part of it is that some, certain kids don't have money for costumes. Mm. But that was mm. always the way it was. Mm. And forever, there's been a Halloween parades where kids would show up and some of the kids had really cool costumes. Some of the kids came in with costumes their parents made. And then there was the dirty kid. There's a kid named Ryan. I don't want to say his mm. name. He was dirty, mm. filthy, and he would come in, white guy, Irish kid, and he would come in filthy, and his parents would just beat him every day and night, and they would piss on him, <laughs> and he never had anything. Mm. And he would come to school, and he would always look like high, but he was never high, but I think he was just getting beaten so much, and he was malnourished, he used to eat like pixie sticks and fun dip, you know, it was bad. So this kid Ryan would come, and he'd be embarrassed, because he'd be like, oh, it's Halloween. I don't know. Walk in. I forgot. We're like, and, and it was rough. It was very sad. But then, like, the teachers would give him, like, a pumpkin mask <laughs> so he could do the parade with everybody else. So this poor kid who smelled like beer piss from a bar and who was still bloody from the parents just kicking the shit out of him would just put on a pumpkin mask and walk. Why, if you cancel it, his life's not going to get better. <laughs> That's my point. His life doesn't get better. Ryan's parents don't decide to love him. They don't even know the parade's happening. They don't give a shit. So he would be sad, kind of. He would be sad. Mm. I remember we went to his house once to get smoke cigarettes. And he goes, my house is kind of messy. And I was like, but I hang out at Rosie's, the crack house, three doors down from him. He goes, right, right. I'm like, I don't care. We don't care. But we went in there, and you could see just cereal and bad, just cigarettes, like ashtrays overflowing with cigarettes. Like He had a bad life. Certain kids have a bad life. It's very, very hard, you know? Mm -hmm. And he was the type of kid who they're talking about, like not, not, you know, privileged, didn't have parents that cared, and, and didn't show up with the uniform, you know? Mm -hmm. like, I mean, I'm sorry, with the Halloween costume. costume. He didn't have... An, so the teachers would like give him cuz they had those little pumpkin masks they were plastic and they would they would go on with the one string yeah it was one string it was not a, yeah. a lot yeah. it wasn't good mm -hmm. but then there was like there was a girl who was like 600 pounds they dressed her as a princess like her parents brought her in and she was just like walking around <laughs> as a princess and then like most of the kids had masks right cool kids have masks like freddy krueger like fuck it mm. Yeah, we're going to kill you. It's Halloween. And then, like, the fat girl, like, the real fat one, her name was Jennifer. She would she'd go like this. Like, she would just do this every day with her head. I don't know why. <laughs> it might have been a thing, but she would go like this every day. Oh, I know what you mean. She would just do yeah. this every single day like this. <laughs> and they put her in a princess outfit, and she would walk like this. And then Ryan, who smelled like piss, would have his little 
thing. It was nice is my point. It was a nice day. And you can't ruin this. It's not, you can't take this away for kids. Mm -hmm. Not everybody. It's insane. Everyone celebrates Halloween. Mm -hmm. Halloween is about eating candy and fucking smashing fucking car windows or throwing eggs, mm -hmm. shaving cream, vandalism. The, the 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 idea that you would just vandalize things. It's a beautiful idea. And these are people that are pro vandalism. They love vandal. Well, where do you think people get the the itch? It starts with Halloween. They don't just get into Antifa. You start with Halloween, you do a few, you know, a couple of eggs, a little shaving cream on the stop sign, mm -hmm. and then you, you know, you graduate to, you know, federal banks in Portland. <laughs> but I don't understand why they're taking this away. Is there any reasoning for this at all? Is there any reasoning? Uh, they decided to cancel the event this year because it'd be upsetting for children who can't afford a costume. That's that's all this it is. is. But then just buy them costumes, mm. you cheap fucks. Why not buy them costumes? Well, also, they, they cite the loud noise levels and crowds are tr triggering for some children. Well, that I agree with. I don't like the noise. Get rid of it. <laughs> this I do agree with that. I don't like the noise at all. That's a very good point. All right, well, we'll have to skip it this year. <laughs> Moving on, we have a feel-good story. That's a very good point. I didn't realize that. They yell and scream. It is uh, disgusting. Yeah. We have a feel-good story now coming out of Austin, Texas. Now, we try to find these stories. God help us, because as you know, things in the country are not good. Mm -hmm. Inflation, the price of a McGriddle now is, what, $38? Mm -hmm. One McGriddle, $38. <laughs> it's bad. And the government just keeps telling you that if you complain about inflation, you're a Nazi white supremacist. Mm -hmm. And uh, the press secretary is always like, what is it? I'm sorry that your gun is costing you too much money this month. Mm -hmm. You're like, well, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, the ch chicken wings are, they've gone up. My family likes chicken wings. Mm -hmm. But the price of everything is going up. Food and gas and the supply chains are broken down. Mm -hmm. Quote, almost everything a person needs to buy is more expensive. Blame the pandemic. Mm -hmm. The supply chains have broken down. We have all kinds of chaos. Now, can you play the video of this woman Let's play this woman who's being interviewed outside a grocery store. There's nothing better than when you get a person outside of a grocery store uh, to give an opinion. Quote, everything has gone sky high from groceries to gas. Prices skyrocketing and could get worse. Here we go. More than expected on everything from food to housing to gas. At this point, it is very hard to ignore. Everywhere we go, things are more expensive. So how much more can prices go up and what's causing this rapid inflation? Tonight, Christina Rex set out to get some answers. Prices are ridiculous. The meat is above and beyond. All right, it's gone sky high. Everything has gone sky high and it's extremely sad. Have you the noticed meat, it too? The meat, it's the meat is above and beyond <laughs> and my husband likes meat and I make him meat and I've made him meat for my entire life. I brown it with butter in a pan and it's sky high now. We eat six pounds of meat a week and now I can't afford it. And I made a salad the other day and my husband grabbed me by the throat and he took my head and he, he, he mushed it. You ever mush someone? He mushed my face. <laughs> he didn't hit me, but he mushed me. He mushed me into the wall. And he said, you better find a way to make this work. It's sky high. Well, this woman, I mean, again, they're outside of a store called Market Basket. God, God help us. But it's sad because, you know, people need uh, the, you know, groceries. And they're too expensive mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's very unfortunate. All this stuff is is going on, and this is the the result of a breakdown in the supply chain. Mm -hmm. uh, there's other people saying blaming the pandemic. They're saying the simplest explanation is everyone has been cooped up for a year and not spending as much as they ordinarily would. And now we all decided at the same time we wanted to go out and spend money on things. Said Tony Cookson, co-director of the Center for Research on Consumer Financial Decision Making. Quote, when we all decide to do that at the same time, the issue is the economy needs to provide us with all those goods. We don't have unlimited capacity to do that. Well, then there's also the thing we have less people working. You have a lot of people now, and this is probably a good thing in the long term. 
They have more leverage. Workers have more leverage, mm -hmm. and they're striking now because there are less workers. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Kellogg's, you hear about this? They are striking at Kellogg's. Now, I don't know the specifics of this. I can't imagine I'm going to side with Kellogg's. But the workers want benefits. They want retirement packages. They want days off. And Kellogg's cereal is basically coming out and saying, fuck you, <laughs> we'll move the jobs to Mexico. Mm. And then denying it. They're saying, we didn't say that. Find, Ben, the statement from Kellogg's cereal. Okay. Okay. The, Kellogg's put out a statement. There's people standing in the rain. I believe it's in Omaha, Nebraska. And they're, and they're protesting and they're saying, we want better hours. We want more money. We want better benefits. And then Kellogg's has a counterpoint to all that. And they put out a video where they were just basically like, what you need to do is keep your mouth shut. Is this it right here? Let's I believe see. so. Battle Creek, Michigan. Kellogg Company Today is publicly addressing the terms of its master labor contract negotiation with it. So they're sending out Chris Bonner. Chris Bonner, I guess, is an executive at... Is that her? Is she an executive? It says Kellogg Company spokesperson. This is the person She's they hired. She's the in. spokesperson. <clears throat> She's going to soften the message. Because the guy, you can't bring out like Mr. Kellogg. Mm. He'll be like, fuck these commie <laughs> faggots. You can't do that. You can't do that. Put the hoses on them. Turn the hose. She's like, let's talk about building a family. Turn the hoses on. In my day, we had dogs. We took hoses and sprayed them. So this is Chris Bonner. She's the spokesperson for the Kellogg's cereal company that is trying very hard mm. to retain the uh, slave labor. We value all our employees and I believe recognize her. their efforts. I, first of all, <laughs> first of all, could anyone look, couldn't they have gotten anyone else to do this than this Karen? Look at this woman. This woman could not effectively communicate anything. No. They have billions of dollars, and they can't get anyone better than her. We we value all of our employees. Let's let's <laughs> let's continue this. Especially during this global pandemic, we are deeply concerned that the union at our four U.S. cereal plants has decided to strike, and what that means for our employees. Being away from work puts our people and their families in a difficult position and can create financial hardships. And pay them. Our number one priority is to get back to the negotiations table right. and reach a contract so our employees can get back to their jobs and their lives. Now, Kellogg's, we're in especially Kellogg's defense, the, the contract that Kellogg offered is very fair. You were allowed to use the bathroom twice a week. <laughs> this was a fair contract. This is not a bad deal. Mm. You, the, it was a 16-hour day. With two breaks, every eight hours you would take a break. Mm. The break was supervised. You would take a supervised break, um, and you would take a break, which I think is nice, at your station. <laughs> because when you, when you go outside, they have found, they've done a lot of studies that going outside has all kinds of effects on the worker. Mm. They see the blue sky, and, the th and it get, they get very distracted, and it's very triggering. <laughs> so they have the break at the station, and you have the break, and you stand there silently, and it's a supervised break because they, again, don't want anyone going outside or making a phone call or calling home or doing anything mm. that could distract them. And every eight hours, you get one of these breaks. Twice a week, you're allowed to leave your station and use the restroom mm. um, for number two. Number one is a catheter. So whatever you're doing, as you're toasting the, uh, I don't know what the hell they're doing, the special K, as you're toasting the cornflakes, or that's General Mills, Kellogg's is what? Cornflakes? I think it's cornflakes. Right? No, it might be General Mills. You don't think. Find <laughs> out. We're we're making th we're slandering a company. Let's at least slander the right okay, one. Hold on, hold on. Here, I'm on their foods and brands. Here we go. Kellogg's cornflakes. Yeah, cornflakes and all kinds of stuff. Mm. So as you're toasting the cornflakes, you get you you will use the rest. You will have a catheter. Mm. Meaning you will pee, and then there'll be a colostomy bag mm. on your leg of mm. your, of your, um, you know, of your, uh, what's the word for piss? Uh, urine or... Uh, Whatever, yeah. of your urine on the leg. <laughs> and it's not a big deal. Now, in terms of a vacation, mm. in terms of a vacation, okay. they're offering a vacation at a Kellogg's approved facility, which will be very similar to a resort. Okay. But you will work... During the vacation, because it gives you pride. It gives you dignity. 
going to a resort is undignified, but going to a specialized Kellogg's and where you will work eight-hour days as opposed to 16, mm. and you will then spend time with your family. Mm. And they, they're they throwing in uh, frosted mini-wheats for the children at the, at the Kellogg's-themed resort. Mm. It'll have a pool. It'll have fun history of Kellogg stuff on the walls and frosted mini-wheats for your children. Um, if your children get sick from eating corn pops or Eggo waffles or any of their products, Fruit Loops. I love how co- they have Kashi. Like, they don't even, you know. But if your kids get sick, they will allow you an hour to take your child to the doctor. Mm. Now, they're not going to pay for it. But if you can find the money to get your kid to the doctor, you can leave the facility for one hour. At one hour and one minute, you will forfeit your pay for the week. I don't think these are bad terms. Mm-hmm. Let's continue with this woman because I think she's fair. Concerned that the union struck without allowing members to vote on the company's October 1st offer. Kellogg's proposals have been grossly misrepresented by the union in statements to their membership and to media. And we want our employees to have Stop all right the information here. they need. This is what they're doing. This is the real thing they're offering. 9% wage increase. For legacy employees. We don't even know what that means. 9%. Pathway to full legacy rate and significant increases for transitional employees, which means the entire company. Transitional employees, Mm. like everyone. Right. No change to employees' current health care plans. Enhanced interrogation. No, I'm kidding. Enhanced (laughs) retirement benefits for transitional employees. Increased pension multiplier. No proposals related to continuous crew or alternative work schedules. One week paid time off at vacation rate. One week. Not bad. Not bad. One week paid time off. Mm -hmm. Which you can spend going to the doctor with your kids. Because let's finish this woman... Need to make informed decisions for themselves and their families. Let's start with what we are not doing. Kellogg is not asking employees to give up health care, retirement benefits, no. or holiday and vacation pay. Right. The fact is, we're proud that most employees working under this contract have industry-leading pay and benefits, right. and all have above-market wages and retirement. The grain industry. In fact. The average 2020 earnings for the majority of our hourly serial employees was $120,000 per year. And more than a third earned between 120. That's that the math, the math done to get to that. Yeah, yeah. We're all supposed to believe that a bunch of people making 120K a year Mm. are incensed. Right. Which is a complete that's a complete lie. She goes, the average 2020 earnings for our hourly Kellogg serial employees, meaning they're averaging like five people who've been there forever who they actually pay mm-hmm. with everyone else. But there's no way that's the case. There's no way that a bunch of people are making 120 grand a year in the Kellogg's factory <laughs> right. and they're all striking right now. There's just such a lie. Can right. you imagine that? Yeah, yeah, in Kansas, making yeah. 120 an hour. Our average, our average hourly employee earns $5 million a year. <laughs> we have industry-leading pay. That can't be true. Mm-hmm. Thousand and two hundred thousand. Most also have unparalleled, no cost, comprehensive health insurance, meaning they pay nothing for their health care. No premiums, no deductibles, nothing. But that's going to Less change. senior employees have the same health insurance plan that all our salaried employees have, except they pay much lower employee contributions than the rest of us. A construct that was agreed upon with the union. So, why are they doing this? Are they sociopaths? <laughs> what are they doing? Why are they doing it? Have they lost their minds? I don't, you know? Right. What What are they doing? Free health care, 120 grand a year? Mm-hmm. Sounds great. Right. What are you talking about? Let's go to the, can we get a Kellogg employee who's probably just going to be full of scabs and bleeding? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's find an employee. Just here. some Vietnam veteran sitting there in a wheelchair, just fucking bleeding, <laughs> screaming about Rice Krispie treats. One of them has to be on YouTube, right? There's got to be a Kellogg employee explaining what's going on. We got, you know, unless Kellogg strike. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Right here, here we go. 
Well, this morning, Kellogg is no longer making cereal. Workers have voted to strike last wow. night. This strike went into effect at midnight after the union's five year contract with the company expired. News 8's Dana White is live outside the Battle Creek Kellogg facility now with a deeper look into this dispute. Emily Donovan, good morning. Members of the union voted on this strike yesterday after negotiations between them and Kellogg went through. You could see that we have buses of employees coming here this morning and the members of the strike are not letting up. The contract for all facilities expired at midnight and there is no new one in place. According to the union's website, there are still some issues to resolve in the most recent offer from Kellogg, including the elimination of cost of living adjustments the creation of permanent transitional positions, no full-time benefits for those permanent workers, an adjustment to the PTO policy, a holiday pay change, and a plan to remove all union logos from products. We spoke with one of the strike leaders this morning. Everybody in this plant makes incredible sacrifices that most people wouldn't understand. Uh, they work eight days a week, at least. And that's months on end without a scheduled day off. I mean, some, some people in the plant don't have a scheduled day off for the entire year. Um, so we're, we're not willing to accept that anymore. Union leaders also alleged that the most recent contract proposal was never presented to the negotiating committee. They say their committee is still at the table and that Kellogg sent home its negotiators before posting the current offer. We so reached out happened. to Kellogg. So now there's no cereal. Because these people want to see their kids. How lazy are these people? What's going to happen if someone wants cereal? Is everyone, does, do people not understand morality and what's morally right and what's morally wrong? It is not right to strike and deprive people mm -hmm. of frosted mini wheats because you think you need to go and see your children for a day. So there's a guy standing in a storm, and this has gone viral. Mm -hmm. Image of Kellogg's worker picketing in 3 a.m. storm goes viral. Uh, well, this, these are the things I don't... This is like when you find a kid, you know, the drone strike. They, they show the kid and yeah. the drone strike, and they go, this is why we have to fight ISIS, because... And you go, what? Um, I do like the Tony the Tiger, I'm greedy. That's nice. Sign. It is fun because you know what you can do here with the strike and the people lose. You can have a lot of fun with the mascots. Yeah. You can have a lot of fun mm -hmm. with the mascots. Mm -hmm. Like there should be a mini wheat with the, the hammer and sickle. <laughs> you know, the <laughs> communist hammer mm -hmm. and sickle. Mm -hmm. There should be a mini wheat doing that. Dress up a mini wheat as Joseph Stalin. <laughs> if they're not dressing up mini wheats as Joseph Stalin, mm -hmm. the Rice crispy. What are they, elves? They're elves, yeah. The Rice Krispie elves should be, uh, they should be painted uh, killing executives, like cutting the throats of executives. Mm -hmm. The Fruit Loops Toucan, Toucan Sam, mm -hmm. Toucan Sam should have his arm around Mao Zedong. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> this is good. This gets people thinking because you start going, oh, this is interesting. Mm -hmm. Even the mascots are getting involved. A lot of the problem is I don't care about any of those people. Right. You know the people with the signs? Who gives a shit? I don't know them. But if all the mascots got together, the sun, Tony the Tiger, those twinks who make Rice Krispie <laughs> treats, uh, and the cornflakes uh, chicken, if they all, or rooster, he's a rooster, whatever. His gender is none of my business. If they all got together uh. and explicitly, if there was artwork of them Killing executives, burning their houses down. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that to me would be a little exciting. Mm -hmm. I'd want to get more on board. Yes. You know? Get a picture of Joseph Stalin up. <laughs> get a picture of Stalin up. Now let's imagine, get a, get a nice picture. Okay. Of, of uh, Stalin. I like this one. This one's good. Make that, make, give the Raisin Bran son... Put the Raisin Bran son as Stalin. Mm -hmm. I, that's my point. Better help. People are sad. People are tense. They're anxious. The world is opening up again. And there's a lot of people that live in therapy deserts. That's like food deserts, meaning you can't get good one-on-one -on -one therapy. Mm -hmm. 
So what do you do? You go online and you talk to a licensed professional in under 48 hours with better help. If you don't like that counselor, you move on to another one who gives a fuck. You are in the driver's seat at better help. They have so many great counselors that care about you. This isn't a crisis line. This is real deal therapy. It helps people. H-E-L-P. And it's better than other options. If you're feeling sad or mad or bad, go to BetterHelp. If you're feeling upset or bereft, go to BetterHelp. If you're feeling tense, if you're on the fence, go to BetterHelp. If you want to be a dancer... Or if you have late stage cancer, go to better help. If your pet has been dead a while, or you're a pedophile. <laughs> go to better help. If you if they edit this out, I will fire you. For better real? help though. For real? No, you can, you gotta leave this in, man. Okay. All right. Do they want the business or not? <laughs> Truly. Go to betterhelp.com slash Tim D. That's betterhelp.com slash Tim D. There's over a million people who've taken charge of their mental health with all the help of experienced professional. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp. They're recruiting good counselors in all 50 states. The podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. And Tim Dillon Show listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash Tim D. Sheath Underwear. I love Sheath Underwear. The, the owner of it used to uh, was in the military when the Iraq War. If you go to SheathUnderwear.com, you get underwear that is so comfortable, you'll never want to wear another type of underwear. It has a package for your balls and your junk. And this, and, and I support trans businesses. This guy was a woman. When he served in the Iraq War, Robert Patron was a woman. And I'm not dead naming him. He likes this because it's inspiring. <laughs> he was a woman named <laughs> Sheila. Sheila Patron. And he got um, surgery, transgender surgery, in Iraq. How fucking cool is That's that? awesome. It's fucking awesome. And then he became a, 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 one of the first trans people to shoot a 12-year-old in the head. SheathUnderwear.com. Do some fucking research. They love comedy and they support the show. You're supporting a trans murderer. Trans murdering business. Go to bed. SheathUnderwear.com. What does that even mean? Oh, SheathUnderwear.com. Use promo code TIM to save 20%. SheathUnderwear.com. Use code TIM to save 20%. Feel good story today coming out of Austin, Texas. Austin, Texas, as you know... uh, a place where I live, it is a beautiful place. It is the epicenter of comedy in America. Mm. It's, there's nothing funnier than Austin, Texas. Mm-hmm. There's nothing funnier when you land there. It is funny. I mean, you laugh from when your feet leave the plane to when you walk back on the plane. It's funny. I mean, it's just hilarious. It's hilarious. Even the shootings, and there's many of them, are funny. Even the people that attack you in the street, it's funny. They, 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 they do it in a funny way. It's funny how you get uh, carjacked. It's funny. <laughs> it's fun. And every now and then, because so much of the news is sad, so much of the news is sad, the Kellogg's company going to war with the people that make cereal. I didn't even know you needed to... I thought cereal just kind of happened. But apparently there's people doing it. Mm. It's crazy. Um, so this is, a, this is just a feel-good story. This is a light, fun story. Sometimes we do things on the show that have a dark... There's a darkness to them. This is not that. Mm-mm. This is light, fluffy fun. And, 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 it, it, and it's beautiful. I want you to watch this because it is truly... It, it's, it's just a great story about... Human beings at just having fun and doing good stuff. This is body cam video from Starflight senior flight nurse Jennifer Roberts. A bongo she rescued Thursday from a swollen Blanco River in San Marcos was Frank Fell. She was 
so in control that I just felt it was relaxing to know they were there because up until that point, we were pretty sure we weren't going to make it. Friday, I showed Roberts what Frank had to say. It means a lot. We often don't get to meet anybody after the fact or hear how people do or, or anything, and so it's, it's really nice to hear those, hear those comments. The call for Starflight to head to San Marcos came after storm waters rushed down the Blanco River and into transient campsites. They are so this now is a beautiful story. Uh, uh, the rivers are now biblically washing the homeless mm. down the river in Austin. Mm -hmm. The homeless that live on the riverbed are being washed away by uh, the rivers. And they're... they're their homes are being washed down the rivers. Mm -hmm. And don't think too much about that. That's not what the story is about. Mm -hmm. The story is about this, uh, these first responders who then rescued one of the people. Frank Fell. Frank. I don't know what happened to the others. I'm, I'm sure they are fine. One of the homeless people, one or two of them were uh, rescued. So we're <laughs> focusing on that. We're just kind of, we don't want to get into, we don't know what happened to the rest of them. Mm -hmm. But there was a transient community of uh, homeless people, but we're saying transient. Mm. And uh, this is, it's just another example of, 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 of that we're just, that it, we're absolutely living in hell. That this is the idea of a, a feel-good story. That the river is washing away the homeless <laughs> and that first responders ended up saving one of them. And this is a, a great occasion for all of us. We should all rejoice that uh, a first responder went and saved a homeless guy mm. who's living down by the riverbed. <laughs> Here, let, let, let's finish this. ...into the muddy riverbank. It just stopped raining, and uh, we thought it was over, and the next thing we knew, we heard, we heard a noise that we didn't know what it was, and we looked out, and there was just a wall of water coming. When the helicopter arrived, the crew quickly realized this was not going to be a typical rescue mission. We knew there were four people. That's about all the information that we had. Um, four people that need to be rescued. When we got overhead, it was it was apparent that not only were there four people, but there was also four people with um, some belongings that uh, were clearly very important to them and a dog. And then when I got down there, I found out there was also a puppy involved. This is that puppy, alive and well. And I've been involved Yay! in some others before. Right? Woo! <laughs> Fuck yeah! <laughs> we're killing it! Austin, Texas! Austin, Texas! How fucking cool is that? Come, live by the river, bring your pup, and it's gonna work out, because this bitch may save you. It just, it feels good. I like when things feel good. And this just makes me happy. It makes me happy. Now... I don't want to ruin I don't want to ruin this by asking what happens to the people now. Do they go work at the Kellogg's factory? <laughs> what happens to these people? Uh they were uh returned to a new camp under the Highway 80 bridge. Well, it's cool. Well, that's a happy ending. That's a happy ending. So you're telling me the people they rescued went back under the bridge. But it says well, this is good. This is beautiful. I was thinking it was going to be something heartless, but they're back right under the bridge, mm. which is, if you remember, where this all started. Mm. Now, so they, what do you do? You think they give them a shower or anything, or not really? They probably give them a new tent, right? And and then they put them back under the bridge. What it's, what it's saying here? It's saying they returned under the bridge and. Uh... Uh, the the these were all smashed and scattered into a muddy riverbank. Uh, I know it's like, what are you gonna do with them? I mean, that's the real issue. I, right. I'm not. I can't take them in. But this is the question. I I hope that, but this is just gonna keep happening. It seems like it's not a great solution to just put them back under the bridge. But what do I know? <laughs> But this is a feel-good story. Mm. This is what I mean about the feel-good stories. Mm. They're not going to be like they were in the old days. No. You know? No. No, you're not going to have that. This isn't a story about a guy who beat cancer. This is a story about people that were living under a bridge 
that were saved from a flood that have then gone back to live <laughs> under the bridge. That's the story. And they're happy. The guy's going, thank God. We didn't know we were going to make it. Very thankful, yeah. He goes, we, we, we thought we weren't going to make it, but thank God that we were saved and are now being deposited back <laughs> under the bridge. And then hopefully... It was a team effort, according to Roberts, who added, after they returned to Austin, they had only one quick moment to reflect on the rescue. That's because the next call for help could be a moment away. Mm. Well, good for her. Good for her. This is a this is a great system, I think. Because it gets everyone can be a hero. Yeah. She can be a hero. Mm. It's important. You need heroes and you need people to uh Rescue people. Where is that thing you sent me about the Austin crime? There's just... Oh, yeah. a, a, after, like... What is it? After 8 p.m. in Austin, it just turns into a rape -a It seems to be a new segment they're doing called, like, Austin After Hours. Yeah, it's like Austin After Dark. And that doesn't mean, like, hear the fiddle player. It means just straight up, like, the streets will run with blood. I had no idea how dangerous Austin, Texas was. It's like insanely dangerous. After 9 p.m., the streets in Austin run with blood. Hold on, I think our internet went down. Oh, God damn it. The internet went down at the temporary studio? <laughs> How's it coming with our new studio, by the way? How's the new studio coming with our, with our idiot realtor? <laughs> hey, guys, my wife's having a baby. Hey, who gives a fuck? No one cares, this big dumb idiot. Because our business manager, who is, um, I want to be respectful, but he's mentally retarded. <laughs> he, every friend he has or connection he has is a bigger loser than him, mm. amazingly. Yeah. So he sets us up with this, like, frat boy retard who's like, my wife's having a baby. <laughs> he shows us a unit. Like, I'm not saying you have to know who I am, but, like, Google me if you have a client. I'm like, yeah, my new building... There's a lot of these whores running around. He's like, are you single? That could be pretty good. Yeah. It's like, all right, buddy. Will you calm it down? We're not playing beer pong here. Okay? But again, it's this frat boy kind of jovial horse shit. Uh, that, you know, so we go, we go to a unit with this guy, right? That's correct. Yeah. And yeah. then we find out. We say, we'll take it. And then what does he say? He says it's not available. That's right. <laughs> so he's wasting our time. He's wasting his time. Now, do you realize how low on the totem pole you have to be to be showing office space in L.A.? I mean, this is the single. This is the capital of the single-family home. If you want to make some fucking money, you go sling some bedrooms and bathrooms. You, mm -hmm. but this guy is showing office space. There, there's a no one even wants to go back into the office anymore, and he's showing office space. And he was recommended by our business manager. Yes. I mean. I just don't understand. I'm I'm losing my patience. Mm -hmm. We're trying to get a real studio. Am I wrong? No, you're right. To lose my patience? Yeah, no, we thought we had the studio. We this. thought we had it. I'm sorry. Should I not be talking about this publicly? <laughs> I'm not mentioning his name, but the slob who manages our money has got to stop connecting us with his near-do-well deadbeat friends. It's not my fault that everyone you know is the lowest person in every industry. Can you fucking please get one decent connection that you can hook us up with? I mean, Christ almighty. I mean, it's like enough already. And him, I got to get on you because you're so sweet. I always have to be the bad guy mm. because these people, you, you, you're like, hi, hi, do we have the I got to call up like a big fat cunt and scream to get something done. <laughs> Here is the Austin After Hours. Police oh, yeah. watching late night clubs. Go. So this is like, again, if you're going to have a bachelorette party, go down to Austin. This is the place. Mm -hmm. You're going to love it, you fat bachelorette. <laughs> Don't go to Nashville. Come down here. This is what's waiting for you in Austin. I will not rest until the city of Austin is condemned. Austin After Hours, Austin patrolling the entertainment, entertainment district. district has seen more violent crime in the last several months 
to learn more about what's driving it, our team went out this past weekend with APD's downtown patrol officers. And they tell KXAN investigator Kevin Clark they're getting more calls after the bars close. Everybody's realizing how horrible it is. This is why there's violent crime. People are realizing how bad it is, and they're angry, and they can't kill Elon Musk, so they have to kill who's ever in their vicinity. They've all been sold this bill of goods. They go down there, and they're like, it's not even fun. It isn't fun. And they're just all drugged <laughs> up, and they've got a loaded gun on them because it's America. Right. And they just start fucking going crazy. Mm. Let's continue this. Gunshot wound at 6 and Sabine. And at 1.18 Saturday morning, Sergeant Garibay started running. Yeah. With KXAN investigators right behind. It's One fat slop. Victim. Three blocks from the heart of the 6th Street Entertainment District. We got a bachelor party, Louis. Where thousands were gathered was a 17-year-old in critical condition. He later died at the hospital. Let me get some crime scene tape. Back it up, back it up. Police say it came after a gun battle between two groups, which prompted an officer to fire their own weapon. Here's the crime scene, sir. Thank you. Welcome. For Sergeant Garibay and other downtown patrols, the night can change in an instant. Two hours earlier, he told me this. Based on the crowd right now, I think we're going to have a happy crowd with a few disturbances. Uh, that's my, uh, my forecast for tonight. <laughs> we initially came out with police because of their concern over after-hours clubs. One of them we told you about is Tellers, which police described as the site of violent offenses from assaults, robberies, and even shootings. APD has written 47 crime reports tied to the Trinity Street address so far in 2021, more than the previous three years combined. That was a bar that typically generated a lot of calls for us after bar hours, uh, a lot of disturbances, you know, that took place in front of the bars. Well, whatever. Closed temporarily. I'm not, I'm not trying to, I don't care about after hour stuff. I'm not trying to like, get somebody in trouble here. What I'm trying to say is that this city is just always on the brink. Mm. It's always on the brink of exploding in gunfire every night. I mean, God, we got hoodwinked. How do we get hoodwinked like this? You're supposed to look out for me, and you don't. I let you down. You let me down big time. You should have told me. You got excited to go back to Texas. A little bit. Yeah, you did. Because cause people like you, down deep, you know, it's your culture. It's not my culture. You know? Yeah. It's not my culture. It's your culture. You know? <laughs> I'm not, you know, like, I appreciate all the cultural experiences. I mean, you had cops at your wedding. You had police at your wedding. Sheriffs. You had sheriffs at the wedding. Mm-hmm. Making sure people didn't drink too much. Mm. That's not my culture. <laughs> it's not my culture. Mm. There's nothing wrong with it. Mm. I'm happy. I enjoyed your wedding. It was very nice. Thank you. It was very sweet. Thank you. But this is just a different way of life mm. for me and for a lot of uh, people that we know. But, you, you know, there's something about you that you, you, you also uh, realize that this is, you know, this is not good. You must, you must leave. It's horrible. It's horrible. It's terrible. You know? You, you, you have to not do this. Mm -mm. You know? And I know that people, people like you see a value in it. Because you're animals. Mm. But I, you know what I mean? Well, part of you wants to go back to Long Island. Part of me wanted to go back to Texas. That's right. right. Mm. But Long Island's a beautiful place of amazing people. That's the difference. Mm -hmm. Do you understand the difference? <laughs> There's a huge difference between me wanting to do that and you wanting, you know? Mm -hmm. At your wedding, a woman gave birth. <laughs> a woman gave birth. Your sister gave birth at your wedding. <laughs> and it made, it made people, me, it made me uncomfortable. I'm sorry. And no one cared. <laughs> and the baby came out bloody full of afterbirth and it just started eating a rib it's not right it's a weird life that's all i'm saying it's strange and you made us move there because you're listening to joe rogan i had no part in this you said it's going to be good for your comedy career 
to move down there. That's why you made us move. You said, I'm going to do comedy at Joe Rogan's new club. That's right. Yeah. I just dragged you kicking and screaming the whole way. Wouldn't it be funny if you opened a club called Vaccines? That would be funny. It was just called Vaccines. Mm -hmm. You know? That would be fun. I'd work there. <laughs> Ship Station. Online is everything right now. You know it and I know it. If you have an online business but you don't know about the shipping, you got to try Ship Station. They funnel all your orders into one simple interface that you can manage from anywhere, even your cell phone. You shouldn't be worrying about the back office stuff. You need to be spending time generating business. ShipStation has access to all the major carriers. UPS, FedEx, USPS, easily compare characters and choose the best solution every time. ShipStation small businesses can now access the same rates, usually reserved for Fortune 500 companies, without the contracts or commitments. Just use my offer code Tim Dillon to get a 60-day free trial. That's T-I-M-T-I-L-L-O-N. Tim Dillon to get a 60-day free trial. That's two months free of no hassle, stress-free shipping. Just go to ShipStation.com, click on the microphone at the top of the page and type in Tim Dillon. That shipstation.com. Enter offer code Tim Dillon. I'm telling you right now, guys, if you want to free yourself up to work on whatever it is, the art or the generating of the business, the sales, the marketing, and you don't want to worry at all about shipping, you got to use ShipStation. Make ship happen. I love Raycon earbuds. They're so much better than all the bullshit that you get from Apple. Raycon is amazing. They look and feel and sound better than ever. Raycon is great. They're cheaper but better. Six hours of nonstop playtime. They have pure mode, balance mode, bass mode. You can, you can listen to music any way you want. They have noise canceling, but they also have a feature where you can also hear noise if you want to to make sure that you stay alert. Raycon started half the price of other premium audio brands, but they just sound, they sound just as good. They sound better. Raycon's come with a 45-day happiness guarantee. If anything happens, they'll replace it. Right now, listeners can get 15% off their Raycon order at buyraycon.com slash Tim. That's buyraycon.com slash Tim to save 15%. These are great headphones. They're better than everything else. I have Raycon earphones, and I use them. And if I have extra ones, I eat them. They're also good as a snack, but I like to listen to them. I put them in my ears, and I listen to people sing. Steve will do it. We can't say enough great things about Steve. Steve is a philanthropist, along with his friend Takashi69. They go around and help people. Steve does give people money. Steve from Nelk. We all know Nelk. Mm -hmm. It's the group of pranksters that run around the country going to colleges, telling people to have fun and party mm -hmm. and drink and jump off roofs and be cool. The Nelk Boys. Steve is the breakout star of the Nelk Boys. Check out his Happy Dad Seltzer available in stores in Florida, Nevada, California, and Massachusetts. Not the brightest states, but that's where they're marketing the Happy Dad, in states where people party, right? Mm -hmm. Florida, Nevada, California, and Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. They're not 50 states yet, but they're starting with the states where people are most likely to uh, become paralyzed after a night out. <laughs> Steve is one of the most, emer he's the biggest emerging, one of the biggest emerging fashion brands with Full Send. Go to FullSend.com. Sign up for exclusive merch drops. Everything is currently sold out. And if you don't want to miss it, you got to go to FullSend.com. So what Steve does is he sends people money because he makes money gambling or Bitcoin or something. Mm -hmm. He does something in, what does he do? It's a, I think it's a gambling website. He so does he, something yeah, in Mexico. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't think we can talk about that part of it. What does he do? He tests people for AIDS down there? <laughs> I think he has AIDS tests in Mexico. It's like the Theranos, Elizabeth Holmes, right? Mm -hmm. Isn't that what he's doing? Yeah, I think so, yeah, yeah. Well, he's whatever he's doing. He, he's donating money. He gives money. Some people yeah, say, yeah. I need money, and he gives them money. Don't get any ideas, people, with me. But he'll send them like $600 on Venom. He's a good person. Mm -hmm. He's a good guy. He is. He, li he drinks. He'll drink a, a fish tank of booze and then grab Takashi 6 9 and then go. He, they just walk into a cancer ward and make it rain. <laughs> they just make it rain in a cancer ward. Mm -hmm. All those little bald kids with the full scent hoodies. Yeah. And he's just good like that. Mm -hmm. He's good like that. He gave David Dobrik a Tesla. And David Dobrik is an underprivileged guy. 
right? That's right. Because he's had a rough time, remember? Because he tried to kill his friend. Mm -hmm. Now, and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not mad at him for that. Who cares? You, 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 you threw your friend off, uh, what did he put him on a parachute or something? And whatever, the guy hit the water at the wrong angle. He thought he was dead. Shut up. Everyone's a puss. So we'll do it gave David Dobrik a, a Tesla because uh, it's nice. Mm. I thought it was a rape thing. Well, no, that was uh, that was before that. Oh, okay, gotcha. And, it, you know, I don't know what's going on here. David Dobrik is never accused of that. Gotcha. He's never accused of doing anything gotcha, wrong. Gotcha, gotcha. See, when you say things like that, that's legally actionable. <laughs> that's why you don't speak. Some other guy, part of his crew, might have been at something. Right, right, right. But I'm not. A, I'm not a. Let's blame everybody for everybody. No, thing. no, no, no. I'm no. not into that. I have no issues uh, with uh, 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 David Dobrik, and it, well, I don't know anything about him. Mm. I don't. I, I like entertainment, and if a few people get paralyzed for entertainment, mm. not a big deal for me. Mm. Go to Steve. We'll do its YouTube channel right now and see what all the hubbub is about for yourself. Steve drops new videos every single Thursday. He loves cigarettes, but then he quits and he goes back. So go there. Steve will do it. His YouTube channel. That's S-T-E-V-E-W-I-L-L-D-O-I-T. You got to spell it out. Steve will do it on YouTube. Um, I think these Nell kids are really helping out because... They are, are teaching young people that life is about getting drunk mm. and using drugs and having sex and partying. And I think we've gone so far away. We, we've, we've, gotten, we've gone so far into that other thing where everybody's thinking and they're so annoying. Mm. There's something really beautiful about the Nelk brand of how to live your life. Mm. Nelk is a way to live your life. Mm. It's a way to live your life. Now, you have to stop doing that eventually because you're going to die. Right. You're going to die. Yeah. But the good news is, fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, you're going to die. So Steve will do it. LLC. We love him. He's a fan of the show. We've never met him. We had one dinner with these people, and he chose not to show up, but that's okay. I don't know what he was doing, brushing his teeth or something. I don't know, but he didn't come. And uh, But it's fun. It's a, it, they're a great group. I'm a fan of the uh, Nelk philosophy on life, which is like, hey, who cares where your shoe is? It doesn't matter that you're failing. Mm. That's their philosophy. Who cares about your shoe? Your mother's a stupid bitch. What was she going to do with that money anyway? She's spending the money on your college, but what was that dumb whore going to do with it? Who cares? Your academic advisor can go fuck himself. That guy's a loser. He keeps running his fucking mouth. Maybe you'll just beat his ass. Beat his ass, bro. <laughs> Break your academic advisor's neck <laughs> if he tells you that you're the... And fuck your doctor, too, this fucking cuck who tells you that you have cancer of the liver now. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Sometimes people throw up blood. It's part of life. You know? And I think that's a decent philosophy on life. Mm. Fuck your mom. Fuck the cops. Mm. You can handle it. Seven beers deep, you can handle driving to another bar. Mm. It's not a big deal. You understand? Yeah, they're very forgiving of, of people's past. They're, it's, it's old school Christianity. Yes. Really? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I think of <laughs> when I think of Nelk. Of like an old school Christianity. Mm. Yeah. I talk to guys in college sometimes because I want to have sex with them. And all, all of them, they always say to me, like, get me, FaceTime me with Steve, we'll do it. Mm. That's their, they, all they want. Mm. That's all they want is to talk to Steve, we'll do it. That's literally all they want to do. That's their entire life. Mm. It's, it's amazing. He's a cool guy. He's a very cool guy. We haven't met him. Hopefully we'll meet him. Mm. 
Um, go to his Steve will do it on YouTube. We're not doing the smiley face killer episode. We went to interview one of these uh, people, uh, an academic about the smiley face killer. He was mentally unwell, <laughs> and it, we're not putting the episode out because maybe these kids are getting thrown into rivers. They probably are, but God help them. The people that are trying to figure out what's going on are have been trying since 2006, and they're all frauds. And this guy was mentally ill. He said, do you want to speak to my girlfriend? She has a gift of prophecy. We went all the way to fucking some fucking horrible town. Ugh. So we're not putting the episode out. Yeah. We're not putting it out. Yeah, big waste of time. It was a huge waste of time, which, again, you did. You got to vet these people. Mm. You have to vet them. Mm. We tried. Should we play a minute of it for everyone? I mean, I haven't mixed the episode. I think I have it somewhere. Let me see. Play a minute of this mental patient <laughs> that we had to suffer through. I got it on my external. Let me grab it. Hold on. We, 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 we go there, and the guy's confused. He's out of it. The smiley face killer theory is these young, athletic, college-aged males end up in the river. Some of it, maybe they fell in, but, a lot, but they think it's some cult or something. So we go down there to interview this old guy, and he, like, kind of confesses to it. He, like, literally said, I predict where they're going to be, and I make sure I go to the ATM and get money out so they don't think I'm doing it. Every I go, three hours. What yeah, the yeah. fuck's this? Yeah. So let's play a minute or two of this so you could see how crazy he is mm. so that, you know, you can understand why we can't put this out. We're trying to do a fun Halloween episode. Okay, so I have his audio. So let me let's just play his audio. I haven't mixed the episode. Yeah, just go to the middle of it or something. Okay, here we go. After about forty-five minutes, I said, "You know, people who are unemployed or uh, in and out of work, uh, retired. It seems to be just like any other cult." Have you guys ever spoken to somebody who is a member of the group or an ex-member of the group or anything like that? Uh, we have, and uh, uh, of course, we've certainly protected their identity. Okay, but they haven't. Um, in the past, uh, there's. So you've spoken to an actual ex-member of the group that's carrying these things out. Yeah. Okay. Yes, we have. Guys, he's nuts. And this guy. Yeah. Yeah, we have. Just skip around one more time. Yeah. That stood out to me, especially as it started to spread out across the United States. If I were to take the profile, and, and you can go online, just pick any one of these young men. He starts going down, into Facebook and, now, and it, I can't, we can't even, I can't even deal with it. But we flew there to interview this guy that's been working on this case since 2006. We go, do you have any motive? And he goes, we're not releasing the motive. And I go, why are you not releasing the motive? He goes, well, then there'll be copycat killings. And I'm like, well, there, there's already copycat killings. And what do you mean the motive, dummy? Nobody's going to copy the fucking motive. So he, he refused to talk about the motive. He, right. He's, he, the guy was a sweet man, but he's senile. He, he didn't want to give away the symbols, the motive. You, the whole thing's the smiley face killer. You gave away the symbol. But I think it's these detectives that, like, they fill these families with hope. And then, because mm. there are shady, these drownings are shady. Mm. You know, these don't make any sense. Mm. So these, like, goons from New York, the detectives, they're like, hey, your son ended up in the water. I'm going to solve the case. I'm going to solve the case. I'm doing a lot of work. I need money. Can you give me money? And then I'll, I'll make all the bad people pay. <laughs> And then the families, like, give these dirtbags money, and then they just, like, these dirtbag detectives buy Chinese food with it. And they did a show on the Oxygen Network where they're exploiting the deaths of these people, and they have absolutely no leads. They have nothing going on. Mm -hmm. And instead of, like, investigating it, they're just, like, eating egg rolls in New York. Yeah. We do the event. Can you play the... <laughs> please play... Can we play the Oxygen Network trailer? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Play the trailer for this, this hunk of shit that Oxygen Network did uh, with these three goons claiming that they know about the smiley face killers. Oh, not the Brett, Brett Easton Ellis also just did a horrible movie 
about the smiley face killers because that guy is the smiley face killer. Remember when he wanted us on the pod? Like, he said to me, like, I was like, can you do my podcast? He goes, no, but you can do mine. Remember that? Yeah, he kind of big time. And he had like 3,000 patrons, and we thought that was huge. Yeah. Yeah, fuck you. (laughs) American Psycho was good, but after that, it's been a lot of shit. What is the what, what what is your Patreon? You talk about Laurel Canyon with Lindsay Lohan? Cut it out. We've had enough. Had enough of him. Next. This is the uh the uh trailer for the uh, fake show on oxygen where these three detectives go around pretending they know uh, who the smiley face killer is. And it's it's like Teresa Caputo, the Long Island uh medium who's mm. pretending that she knows that the dead kid. I mean, it's so heinous what they're doing to these parents. Mm. They're like, they're like, we got all these leads. We're going to make it right. We're going to do And they don't have shit. Let's watch this. I couldn't get to him fast enough. It's hard to think about somebody hurting your child. But I think someone hurt him. It's like it happened yesterday for me. What if it just, just rip your heart out? Hundreds of young it's men so sad. You have these fu- these very sad parents. Yeah. Okay. It's tragic. And there's really shady circumstances with these drownings. Mm. Enter three the goon squad from New York. Watch this. I'm drowned in clusters around the country. We've been investigating for the last 12 years. 12 years. He was heading home and heading that direction. The 50 million dollar question is, how did he get in the water? This is where the dogs lost the scent. They lost hot scent right here, David. Classified as accidental or undetermined. When the numbers start to add and you just, you see it, something's not right. So there is a pattern that's been growing. It doesn't make any sense to me. He was a champion swimmer in high school. Nobody believes it was an accident. Nobody. These retired NYPD detectives aren't buying it. All we know right now is that Dakota James did not drown accidentally. I can't tell you what happened to Luke, but I can tell you what didn't happen to Luke. In almost all the cases, we have found smiley face graffiti near the body recovery site. The smiley face graffiti links all our cases. The search for truth. He's got defensive wounds and offensive wounds from blocking and striking. He had to have been deceased from the drugs prior to entering the water. Could reopen hundreds of cases. This is a highly suspicious case. Smiley face, three stars, three victims recovered. And bring justice to these families. This is what the family wants. They want a true investigation. I believe that Luke was murdered. I mean, I know I can't bring my son back, but I just really wanted justice for him. He was never going to come back. And he was my only child. It's just so sad. And here's the thing. I'm not saying these kids aren't being murdered. I mean, what I'm saying is that these detectives have been working on this case since 2006. They have nothing. They have, there's not a suspect, Mm-mm. there's nothing. They have nothing, except a TV show. That's not the goal when you investigate a case is to get a TV show like fucking 10 years later mm-hmm. to, to 15 years later. The goal is to solve the crime. Well, I think they wrote a book. Yeah, they wrote a book and they got a TV show. <laughs> they got a real great career. <laughs> solve the fucking crime and they, they can't do it. And you have these poor parents that are now sick of these detectives. They're like, because they're like, hey, I got a lead, you know? And that voice, <laughs> one of them's being banged up for sexual assault or whatever. I don't know, but the Oxygen Network, I think, parted ways with these three goons. They said, get out of here. Tell it walking. Because the detectives are from New York. They're like, I'm a New York detective. Mm-hmm. I'm a New York detective. I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to figure it out. I don't know anything. <laughs> I don't know anything about how your son died. But I'm here to bother you and to get on TV. Have you heard of television? We're going to be on TV together. (laughs) You had a horrible tragedy. I have no career. Those two things are beautiful. (laughs) You look at the camera and cry, and I'm going to present myself as a guy helping you when all I'm doing is wasting everybody's time. They went on like Dr. Phil. Mm. It's just... It's just not right to do, right? No. It's not right to do. It would be like if I kept showing up to, like, like someone, if I was looking up, like, missing kids, and I kept showing up to their parents' houses and telling them that I had an idea of how it happened. And I'm like, I got a podcast. (laughs) We're going to figure it out. Right. If I kept showing up. Mm. Do you have any leads? I go... 
No, but I think something shady happened. They go, yeah, we'll figure it out. Let me get my goon squad. Can you get the first episode up where these fucking idiots are eating bacon, egg, and cheeses? Remember they're eating in a diner? It's the first they're episode. Like greasy spoon. Yeah, they're eating in some greasy <laughs> spoon diner. It's a real fucking uh, Food Network special. Let's see if they have them up here. These parents are crying. So then they bring in the Hollywood medium, who's not the Long Island medium. He's the gay Hollywood medium. And then he like talks to one of the parents. Like It's so heinous what they are doing to these parents. I don't think it's this clip. Let me see. Maybe it's this one. No, um, it's the first one. It's like the first thing in the series. I'm like, to buy it. Hold sitting on. there, and they're eating, like, sausage, and they're like, hey, fucking a smiley face killer. This the smiley. And I'm all for believing these people end up in the river in a very suspect way. And I'm not, dis- all the things we figured out on this show, and not figured out, but, you know, that we just know in general, Epstein and Johnny Gosh and all that stuff. I'm not dismissing... The idea that these kids are meeting their end, uh, you know, in a way where you do have. But this is the beginning. <laughs> By the way, can you imagine if your son died in a river? Mm. Your son is dead. Not someone like me, who my parents want dead, but like a young, hot mm. college guy with yeah. a thick cock mm. that you see, even as his parent, you don't want to fuck him, but you're like, look at that cock, you know? <laughs> And and imagine your child has been murdered. Mm. He's dead. These three sausage and pepper heroes show up to your house, and they're they tell you there's a TV show about it. And now you're gonna you're gonna crack the case wide open. So you've got your dead child. Your life is ruined. Justice is in the hands of these fucking meatballs. This is scene one in the TV show. I would throw them in the river. You know, the food's got to be good. Oh, That's yeah. right. It's a real greasy spoon. It's a big winner. Exactly. They're talking about places. food. Yeah, for you, you sir. Okay. Doctor. Thank you. What we have here is a new case to call James. My son is this thing dead. Could be a homicide. My beautiful boy is dead. <laughs> Why are you showing eggs? Christ! And otherwise we wouldn't be here. I wouldn't even have dragged you guys out for this. I, 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 I thought there was something going on. I, was, I have prepared I some stuff for you guys. Off the floor. This, uh, ready for it. My name is Lee Gilbertson. I'm That's a professor. Weird. I teach criminal justice. He's a sweet guy. I love puzzles. He's a good guy. And he had problems a, um, to solve. He had a um, what a hat on a, a Desert Storm hat, but he's mentally unwell. <laughs> uh, what do you want me to say? He's a sweet. He's a sweet he's guy. He's a very sweet yeah, man. He's listening to this he's a sweet guy. Thank you. No, we nice. love you, Lee. Yeah. He sent me a whole email. He wants me to talk to his girlfriend. I can't be involved. I mean, but, I mean, can you imagine? It's like. I mean, if there are people throwing people in a river, by the way, they are going to keep doing it. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you this. If the smiley face killer is real, they are fine, and they are, I mean, not even a small hiccup in anything they're doing mm. because the brain trust assembled to fight them is amazing. But uh, mostly it's the injustice that these families are experiencing really pisses me off. By you guys. What do you think? You think... That he's one of ours, Dakota? I'm Mike Donovan. I'm a retired NYPD detective. When Kevin asked me to come on board with the smiley face, kills investigation. I want to get out of the house. My wife's like, hey, Only because what are you law doing enforcement all the time in the house? Investigated I said, let me, these cases let me go exploit the grief for some families That's what makes this on really, really oxygen difficult. network. Well, I like the fact that it's Look possible guy. Jesus uh, homicide Christ. has not looked at this case. Um, Anthony Duarte, a retired detective from the Bronx. I'm devoting my retirement to working on the smiling face cases. These kids are not just falling in rivers and drowning. I believe there's a lot more sinister Make activity going on. All right, let's get out of this. But but Christ Almighty, like even Jeffrey Epstein got arrested. TimDillonComedy.com. <laughs> I mean, it's that's really all that needs to be said. Fucking Epstein got arrested. Yeah, you yeah. can arrest one of these fucking 
people throwing someone in a river. Mm -hmm. I think some of these are legitimate instances of uh, bad stuff happening. Some of them aren't. They're all mixing them all together. It's a big mishmash, and he got a bunch of people that want to get on TV. Not good. TimDillonComedy.com for all live dates. Spokane, Seattle, Portland, Indianapolis, Morgantown, Pittsburgh, Washington, New York, Atlantic City, Rochester, Iowa City, Madison, Wisconsin, Louisville, Kentucky, Los Angeles, California. Are you guys going to come to that? L.A. on the 26th at the Wiltern? We should make them pay a, a scalper fee, which no one pays scalper fees. Bakersfield, California. That'll be fun, huh? San Diego. Come, can you buy the tickets in Bakersfield? Please don't make me go there. With <laughs> San Diego, Reading, Atlanta, Atlanta, St. Louis, Sacramento, San Fran, Garden City, Idaho, Toronto, Ontario. Ontario, Toronto. It's a 3,000 seat theater. We're selling it well. It's New Year's Eve. It's going to be fucking crazy. It's going to be crazy. So we're really excited about this tour. It's going to be fun. I'm doing an hour material that I'm probably going to tape sometime in January, and we'll 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 uh, see if we can put it out somewhere. But it's a lot of fun. TimDillonComedy.com for tickets. Tim J Dillon D I L L O N on Instagram and Twitter. If you want to follow us, they're at Ben Avery is good on Twitter mm. and Instagram. We have a new studio. I mean, what is the progress? Why don't you answer the people that are fucking sick of this shit? We're in this goddamn TikTok studio where these fucking 15-year-olds come in here and they're like, every other podcast that records out here is people being like, yeah, like the other night, bro. The other night. It's like, where is the smiley face killer? I'm going to call them. I'll pay for your flight. So we're sitting here in this studio. Yeah, yeah. We're unfortunately back to step one after a month of progress. Yeah, step one. Mm, which is finding a, another realtor. That's right. Yeah. We're not even at finding a studio. We're finding a... Because uh, well, I got all plans. I got a whole thing I want built. We got a whole nice thing here. I know, I know. Yeah. If you and your wife would spend less time fucking around in Texas... And more time getting it done. Mm -hmm. What are the ads? Where are the ads? You ready to go to the ads? Okay, let's go to the ads. No, let's not do the ads. I don't know. What do you what do you want to do? You want to eat? 